<laughs> surprise, surprise, China, okay? <laughs> like I mentioned earlier, China is the biggest market for teaching English abroad. Um, so, uh, yeah, no wonder it still is uh, in this list as well. And I do want to say I ordered these countries alphabetically, so there's no particular order, just alphabetically. Um, so why should you go to China besides uh, it is an amazing country. I also taught English in China. Uh, I lived in China a total of a year and a half. I absolutely loved it. Um, and um, yeah, it's a beautiful country, lots of different scenery, lots of different uh, places to see in one big country. It's really easy to travel around by train. Uh, high-speed train or domestic flights, you know, it's really great. So you have everything, you have the mountains, you have the beach, you have forests, you have deserts. I mean, it's really great. Um, but they also have a lot of attractive benefits for teachers, such as free accommodation, paid airfare, and an end of year, uh, end of contract bonus for many teachers. The salaries are also not that bad, um, between 1,000 and 2,500 US dollars. And um, especially considering um, the, the local cost of living, this salary really goes a long way and you're able to save a lot from your paycheck as well. And the opportunities for most teachers in China are at public schools, kindergartens, boarding schools, universities, and international schools. The requirements generally are a bachelor's degree two years of teaching experience, and a TEFL certificate of at least 120 hours. Um, and I have a question about this here. Does our nationality affect our chances of working in China? So China is still one of the countries that don't have this um, policy that they only hire native speakers. So you can still find positions if you are not from an English-speaking country. Um, especially in smaller cities. So I feel like cities like Beijing and Shanghai, like the super competitive ones, there they might only hire native English speakers, but also not only. Um, so you can definitely still find positions in China, even if you're not from an English speaking country. Um, and yeah, some COVID-19 info, and maybe uh, Chibi knows a little bit more about that, so maybe you can also leave a comment. But basically, there is a 14-day quarantine, and you also need a PU letter, so that's kind of a new thing since it all started with COVID. That's sort of an invitation letter that you need to get, and that's typically what your employer would um, get for you. But um, so that's a new document that you are um, allowed to enter because basically tourist visas um, have been suspended. So tourist, tourism doesn't really uh, happen in China right now. So they're not really letting people in on a tourist visa. So in order to get your work visa, you need this PU letter. Yeah. <laughs> and that's about China. Um, yeah, definitely highly recommended. There's a lot of opportunities in China. And once you are in China, you know, you can build your network and, um, e you know, move on to even greater um, opportunities over there. So, yeah. <laughs> Let me take a sip of my coffee and maybe we'll get a comment. Anybody taught in China before? Is anybody thinking about going to China? Um, I would love to know. And maybe Chibi, since you are, are you still in Beijing? It'd be interesting to see or hear some experiences. But yeah, I also have a lot of friends in China and they say, you know, it's pretty much back to normal life there. So um, you just have to go through quarantine and uh, get this PU letter, but they are hiring and their the demand is really, really big. Okay. All right. So, oh, okay. So you taught there for two and a half years. Cool. And then you left in August. Okay. And that's when you wanted to come to Korea. Okay. Got it. Maybe it was because um, you came from China that they didn't let you in. Because I think they banned anyone coming from China that time in coming to South Korea. 
So nobody from China could enter, like who was in China. Okay. Ah, oh, I lived in China as a child. Cool. Nice. I'm thinking of going back. Yeah. I mean, China is a great place. I really want to go back. I still have my 10-year visa, but I can't go right now. Um, oh, that wasn't it. Okay. They just cut the numbers of... Okay. Got it. All right, I'm interested in teaching in China. Cool. What about the salary? Yeah, so here, um, just turning the comment back off. Salaries are usually between 1,000 and 2,500 US dollars. Um, this always depends you know, on your background, your experience, your qualifications, and what type of school you work at. And um, like I said before, the local cost of living, um, the local cost of living really, uh, because it's so low, your salary will go a long way. Uh, all right. Oh, hi. Uh, thanks for tuning in. I remember Jam Jamila, right? Because <laughs> I always said ja, ja, Jamila. Okay. Could you post a website for the English course, please? The basic one. I see different Tesla courses. Oh, cool. So, I mean, you. I think you mean TESOL courses, <laughs> but Tesla is cool too. Um, yeah, so the basic one, sure. Let me get that link for you. Uh, one second. So that's basically the 120 hour course. That's sort of the, um, the basic one to get. And from there, you can build on with um, other qualifications, like additional qualifications, um, also from ITTT and uh, additional specializations and so on. So I'm pasting, um, pasting the link right now to the 120 hour TEFL course for you. Okay. All right, this is a great question. How much Chinese would we have to know to teach English in China? So this is a question that we always get a lot. Do you need to have to know the language of the country that you want to go to and teach in? And the answer is no, you don't have to know the local language because you are going there as the English teacher. So when I came to Korea or also before that I taught in China, I did know Chinese because I studied Chinese in school, but um, it wasn't necessary in my job. Everyone at the school speaks English and you're supposed to only speak English with your students. Um, but yeah, it helps, like Chibi says, yeah, it helps a lot. It helps a lot, like, in your daily life for you personally, for getting around. And, you know, maybe getting rapport with, like, your boss and stuff like that, if you know a little bit of the local language. But um, it is not a requirement. And also, in my school in Korea, they also, um, they had, like, an English-only policy. So you're only supposed to speak English in school and with your students. Okay. Okay. Leslie's asking, is there an ideal age employers look for in teachers or age range you should be in? For China or in general? So China has a retirement age. I believe it's 60. So if you're over 60 and you want to go to China, it might be problematic. Um, and it also kind of depends on, you know, the individual school, the employer, Technique, or uh, basically, there's this thing where for younger teachers, they kind of prefer uh, uh, for younger students, sorry, for younger students like kindergarten, they prefer like younger uh, teachers because they think they're more energetic, they have more energy to handle the little kids. Um, and then for older students or adult students, they would prefer older teachers. But this really depends on, you know, the individual school and your experience and um, all this stuff, so. Okay, hi, Leighton, Leighton has a question. Do they accept, accept people of non-native of non-native teachers who have sufficient skills? Yes, I just mentioned that a few minutes ago, they do in China, they do hire people from uh, anywhere. Um, there is no particular uh, law or rule about that. So if you have your TEFL, if you have a bit of experience, perhaps, um, if you have maybe an English proficiency certificate, 
um, then you can definitely get hired. And I highly recommend you tune in on Tuesday, Lighten, for uh, my colleague Lisa's live. She's a non-native English speaker and she has taught in China and she's teaching online and she knows a lot about that. And I think this would be really interesting to you. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. We are ITTT, the leading provider for TEFL and TESOL training courses. If you like this video, please subscribe by clicking the button down here and click on any of the videos here on the left for more interesting teaching tips for getting certified to teach English abroad and online.